Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all of the praise. And Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. This morning, I'd like for us to be very intentional and deliberate about our thanksgiving. Today is the first day of the sixth month of the year 2023. <laughs> to take God for granted is to be grounded. In Psalm 25 and verse 8, it says, Because they regard not the Lord, nor the oppressions of his hand, 28 verse 5, he will destroy them and not build them all. God deserves our thanksgiving. God demands our thanksgiving. He said, now, O ye priests, this commandment is to you, if you will not hear, if you will not lay to heart to give glory to my name. I bless you, but I will curse your blessings. He said, behold, I have cursed them already. Why? Because you do not lay it to heart. No man can receive anything except it is given to him from above. Every good and perfect gift. If it is good, it is God. If it is good, it is God. How many of us are truly grateful to God that we are alive to see this day? Now, in your own words, in your own way, I want you to give God thanks. Do it intentionally. Do it deliberately. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and let all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth thee of thy iniquities? Who healed thee of thy diseases? Who has rescued your life from destruction? He has renewed our strength. He has crowned us with his loving kindness and his tender mercies. From the depth of your heart, let us give God quality time. No man on earth should give glory to himself, but the glory must be to the Lord. Let no man, no, no man, man no on earth. No institution will return all the glory to you. No man can receive anything except it is given to him from above. And for all of the good things in our lives, all of the good reports on this campus, we return all the praise to you. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Now our Father, breathe upon the congregation of your people afresh this morning. Let your word run swiftly, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, 
Let every veil and covering over the hearts of your people be chattered. Let there be unhindered entrance of the light of your word into our hearts. Let everyone return from here refreshed and blessed by your word. And for all that you do, take the glory in Jesus' precious name. Shall we please give the Lord a big clap of praise? And please, you may be comfortably seated. This morning, we conclude our teaching, which we have been looking at, understanding pathways to godliness. Understanding pathways to godliness. We live in a very troubled world. There is trouble everywhere you turn. Trouble in homes, trouble in businesses, trouble in careers of individuals, trouble across all the continents. There is no continent of the earth today that is crisis free. Everywhere you turn, trouble. And the simple reason why there is trouble everywhere is because men have deviated from following after God. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will also forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. And when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. Because they were without the true God, they had troubles. Verse 5. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the country. Why? Because they were without the true God. Ungodliness is the reason for the many troubles that the world is going through today. And if you and I, we are going to escape the troubles of this life, godliness is the answer. Godliness is the key. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, come to me. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest for your soul. Come to me. The way out of the troubles of life is Jesus. The way out of the troubles of life is godliness. Come. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come. I will lift up the burden on your life. Come. No matter what the struggles may be, come. You are struggling with sin, come. You are struggling with the wickedness of the wicked, come. You are struggling with satanic assault and harassment, come. The answer that you seek is not in science. The answer you seek is in God. Come unto me, all ye that labor, all ye that are heavy laden, plagued with sickness, plagued with affliction, plagued with diseases, plagued with nightmares, plagued, plagued with breakdowns of all kinds. Come! And then I, Jesus, I will give you rest. Jesus said to them in John gospel. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way out of the challenges of life. 
John 14, 6. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The answer that you seek is in godliness. In 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, the Bible says that there is no temptation that has come unto a man, but such as is come unto man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. For with the same temptation, he will make a way of escape. What is that way of escape? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way of escape that you are seeking for. The way out is not in who you know. The way out is not in how connected you are. I will lift my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And in verse 7, he said, he would watch over me, Psalm 121, verse 7. He will preserve me from all evil. He will preserve my soul. But in most of the three and verse three, we are told that two cannot work together except they agree. What is godliness? Godliness is about a quality walk with God. A quality walk with God. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. He said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me. Walk before me. Walk before me. A quality walk with God. Walk before me. What is godliness? Walking in delightsome obedience. Delightsome obedience. John chapter 8, verse 28 and verse 29. John 8, verse 28 and verse 29. Jesus was speaking to them. He said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak this thing. Verse 29, and he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. I do always the things that please him. Delight some obedience. Delight some obedience. Concerning Enoch in Genesis 2 to 5, we are told that Enoch walked with God and Enoch was not because God took him. He walked with God and was not. He didn't see death. He didn't see corruption. Why? God took him. And what is the testimony of Enoch? Hebrews chapter 11, he said, Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. He was a man who walked to please God by faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. He pleased God. How do I walk in godliness? I give us a few keys. Number one is faith. Faith. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. You can't live a godly life except you believe in godliness. If you don't believe in godliness, you can't live a godly life. If you don't believe in the possibility of living godly, you can't be godly. Because it is to every man according to his faith. And in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, we are told that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, you can't live in godliness. You can't live a godly life. Believe in godliness. Believe you can live a godly life. Understand that God will not ask you to do what he has not empowered you to do. He won't ask me to do what he has not empowered me to do. Whatever God calls for is what God has provided for. 
God never calls for what he had not provided. When he asked for an offering in the wilderness, it was because he provided for it before they left Egypt. When he called for Eve out of Adam, it was because Eve was already inside of Adam. When you put a seed in the hand of a man, the seed carries within it the potential of becoming a tree and producing more fruits. God will not ask you and I to be godly except he has given us the capacity to live a godly life. Believe in it. His commandments are not grievous. They are not to punish us, but to polish us. They are not to deny us of the pleasures of life, no. 4 John 5, verse 3, he said his commandments are not grievous. Number two, understand that godliness is a choice. It is not a gift, it is a choice. Joshua 24 and verse 15. Joshua 24, verse 15, Joshua called the people and said unto them, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you shall serve. Whether the gods which your father served on this side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we have chosen to serve the Lord. If you are not walking in godliness, it's because you have not chosen to walk in godliness. It is a choice. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21, Elijah upon the mountain said unto the people, how long shall you be between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If it be bad, then follow bad. How long shall you be between two opinions? Now listen, to follow after other gods is to follow after many sorrows. Because the sorrow of them that follow after other gods shall be greatly multiplied. The way out of the troubles of life is to follow God. You are having an academic challenge. Follow God. Godliness is the answer to surpassing intelligence. You are having issues with your health. Follow God. Godliness is the answer to sound health and sound mind. Godliness is a choice. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meal. It's a choice. You make the choice, God will supply the grace. But without the choice, there is no contact with grace. Number three is responsibility. Godliness demands responsibility. You can't live in godliness except you take responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for your choices. And this responsibility is non-transferable. We had a testimony in the midweek service yesterday, and then the young lady said she, she was nine years old. She loved watching movies and short videos, and then got the phone of one of her cousins in the bit to watch a, a movie or see a short video. And while she was doing that, she stumbled upon pornography. And out of being inquisitive, she wanted to know what is this thing about. And what started like just an ordinary enticement became a habit for her. And that lasted for years, maybe about six years. She felt dirty, felt ashamed, all manner. But she said when she proposed in her heart that no, this is not who God has ordained me to be. This is not who I am created to be. My body will not be messed up. No, no, no. She cried to God, took her destiny in her hand, and God provided the grace that she needed. And two years has come and gone. No masturbation, no pornography, clean and clear. Responsibility. First John chapter 3 and verse 3. He said, he that has this hope in himself, he purifies himself, even as he is pure. He that has this hope, he will purify himself, even as he is pure. Verse 7. Say, My little children, be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. 
He that doeth, not he that is making excuses. Not he that is looking for who to blame. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Second Timothy chapter 2, beginning from verse 19, all through to 21, the Bible says, in a great house, there are vessels of gold and vessels of silver. There are vessels of art and vessels of wood. Now, there are vessels to honor and some to dishonor. If any man purges himself, then he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. If any man, if a man therefore purges himself, he will take responsibility for his sanctification. Then he shall become a vessel of honor that is seat for the master's use. If any man purges himself, we must take responsibility. Jesus was speaking to them in John 17 and verse 19. He said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. For their sake, I sanctify myself. I sanctify myself. What about Paul the Apostles? Acts chapter 24 verse 16. He said, herein do I exercise myself. To have a conscience that is void of offense towards God and man. I exercise myself. I exercise myself. Godliness demands responsibility. Responsibility to purge and purify ourselves. Responsibility to continue to engage the power of the blood for our rescue. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. To continue to engage the power of the blood for our rescue. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, he said, As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have brought thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. Turn you to your stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double. Turn to your stronghold, the stronghold of the blood. There is power in the blood. There is power. Wonder walking power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. It is not what you chant when you see cockroach or when you see rats or when your leg hits the stone. No. That is the only time some of us remember the blood. When something is about to happen that you don't like, you say blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is not for exclamation. The blood of Jesus is a weapon in your hand against the forces of darkness, against the forces of defilement, against everything that is contrary to the counsel of God, against everything negotiating with your destiny. It was the same blood that brought Israel out of 430 years of captivity. The blood. Revelation 12, verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimonies. They overcame by the blood. Take responsibility. Thank God for those who are praying for you, but are you praying for yourself? Godliness demands discipline. Discipline. First Corinthians to the 9, verse 24 to 27. Discipline. Paul said, I keep my body under. I bring it into subjection. I bring it under control. Discipline. You can't live a godly life without discipline. Discipline. What does it mean to walk with God? Number one is to walk in the word. Walking with God is walking in his word. Just like we said earlier, walking in delightsome obedience. Walking in his word. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. James chapter 1, verse 21 to 25. Be a doer of the word. James 1, verse 21 all through to 25. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. We have fallen apart of futiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the grafted word which is able to save your soul. You receive the word. You believe the word. You engage the word. Your soul shall be saved. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he is. But if any man looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth daring and not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man 
shall be blessed in his deed. He shall be blessed in his deed. Walking in the world. Walking with God is not the same thing as walking for God. You can be walking for God and not be walking with God. Activity does not equal to spirituality. Availability does not equal to connectivity. Noah was not the only one who built the ark. There are those who supported it, assisted it, that were a part of the workforce, but didn't make it into the ark. The difference between Noah and the others was Noah was working with God. The others were working for him. Walk, be a doer of the world. What is walking with God? Walking in the spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 16. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. It is walking in the spirit that empowers us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Until you walk in the spirit, you cannot overcome the cravings of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Engage the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Mortifying the deeds of the flesh. Intentionally so. Praying in the spirit empowers you to walk in the spirit. Because every time you pray in the spirit, you build up yourself. You build up your defense. You pray in the spirit, you charge up your environment. You charge up yourself. You pray in the spirit, the spirit helps your infirmity. What are the benefits of godliness? Number one, it engenders access to the spirit of excellence. Godliness engenders access to the spirit of excellence. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's means. And by verse 20, he said that in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in Israel. And Daniel had understanding. God gave him wisdom, surpassing intelligence. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3 to 5. This Daniel had an excellent spirit, an excellent spirit, and the king thought to set him over the entire realm. Why? He had an excellent spirit. How? A man that walked with God. Number two benefit of godliness, it empowers believers for supernatural breakthroughs. First Thessalonians 2 and verse 10, Paul the Apostle said, you are all witnesses. How holily, justly, unblameably we have behaved ourselves among you that believe. And what did the testimony of Paul? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He was a terror to the kingdom of darkness. He was a terror to the forces of wickedness. They couldn't touch him. They couldn't torment him. They couldn't harass him. They couldn't do him nothing. The people exclaimed, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Paul was unkillable. Why? He carried divinity on his inside. And that is what godliness does for you. You carry divinity. A venomous viper beat him at Acts chapter 28. And then the people were waiting for him to die. They waited and waited, and when they saw that Paul would not die, they changed their mind that this one is not ordinary. This one is a God. They, he carried something on his inside that was superior to what was happening on the outside. Godliness makes you unstoppable. You company with divinity, you carry divinity. And when that happens, even gates lift up their heads to you on their own accord. Lift up your head so you get be lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory might come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord of hosts is his name. Lift up your heads. You can't stand against one who carries divinity. And the measure of divinity that we carry is a function of the degree of godliness that we are walking in. The more godly you are, the more of divinity you carry. But I believe God Almighty that there's a change for you and I this morning in the name of Jesus. What more access to our inheritance? Access to our inheritance. Inheritance of divine health. You read Revelation 5 and verse 12. It tells us of the sevenfold benefits of redemption. 
What is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing? Seven-fold package. But all of this is accessible as we walk in godliness. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Godliness is the way out of the troubles of life. Godliness is the way out of crisis. Godliness is the way out of sickness. Godliness is the way out of shame and out of reproach. Jesus said, come, and I will give you rest. Come to me. The answer you seek is with me. For this cause was the Son of Man manifest that he might destroy all the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 and verse 8, that he might destroy all the works of the devil. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I, Jesus, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to go through certain things. There are some unpleasant experiences that you don't, you, you have no connection with. If only you will take a stand for God and maintain your stand for God. Because once saved is not forever saved. Once saved is not always saved. No. My prayer for every one of us is that the grace to truly live a sanctified life, may that grace come upon you and I afresh this morning in the name of Jesus. The grace to take a stand for God and to stand with God till the end of our days, that grace be released upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. Paul said, I've received help from the Lord. I have continued unto this day. Continuity is a function of his help. How many of us want to receive that help this morning? Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hand to heaven. And in one minute, call for his help. Go ahead, call for his help. Go ahead, call for his help. In that troubled area, call for his help. In that area of challenge, call for his help. You are struggling with any kind of defilement, call for his help. Go ahead, lift up your voice. Everyone, rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands to heaven and call for the help of God right now. Go ahead, call for his help. Lord, I receive your help. I receive your help. The help of God is available. Go ahead, call for his help. I will lift my eyes unto the hills. From whence comes my help? My help cometh from the Lord. Lord, my eyes are on you for your help this morning. I receive your help. I receive your help. I receive your help. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are free. Access to help begins with Jesus. And so you are here this morning, you want this help that Jesus offers. Maybe you have been born again before, or maybe you have not even been born again at all. I want to pray for you. Until Jesus comes into the life of a man, crisis will continue. And when Jesus comes into the life of a man, and steps out as a result of defilement, corruption, or sin, until Jesus comes back, peace cannot be restored. And so wherever you are this morning, you want to say, Jesus, I need your help. I want to be free. I have gone through too many troubles already. I want to be free. I want peace. I want rest. Peace in my body. Peace in my sleep. Peace in my academic pursuit. Peace in my endeavors. I want the peace that you offer. All eyes bowed, all eyes closed. Wherever you are, just put your right hand on your chest and repeat this prayer after me. Everyone that wants the help of Jesus, that wants to be born again, wants to rededicate their life back to Jesus, want to walk out of the troubles and the harassment of hell, just place your right hand on your chest and repeat this prayer after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a child of God. From today, be my Lord, be my Savior. I hand over my life to you. I receive your help. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, the choir will do that song. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I am delivered by his blood. Once I was bound by the chains of Satan, 
But now I am delivered. Everyone that prayed that prayer with me, please, I want you to step forward to the altar. I'm going to pray for you right here in front. You pray that prayer. You just receive this help. You just ask for yourself wherever you are. Just come to the altar. I'm going to pray for you very quickly. Just step forward. Everyone that surrendered to Christ, that handed over their life, that rededicated their life back to Jesus, everyone that just prayed that prayer, wherever you are, just make your way to the altar. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Everyone that prayed that prayer with me, please just step forward quickly. Step forward quickly, and then I'm going to pray for you. It's a new day for you. New chapters are opening up to your life and destiny. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered by His blood. Once I was bound by the chains of Satan, I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I'm delivered. up your right hand to heaven as I pray for you. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, your saving grace has visited your sons and daughters. We ask that you keep them by the same grace in the name of Jesus. Everyone standing in front, say after me, Lord Jesus, from this day forward, be my Lord, be my Savior. I need you to say it. Say, Lord Jesus, from this day forward, be my Lord, be my Savior. My life is in your hand. I receive your help to fulfill your purpose for me on the earth. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' precious name. Now I cover you all with the precious blood of Jesus, and I decree by your confession of faith, your sins are forgiven. Welcome to the family of God. From this day forward, whatever access the enemy had into your life, that access is sealed. Now, whatever you have laid before him this morning, that you have asked for his help concerning I decree that no more will you encounter that struggle. That contention, that struggle is over forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. It's a new day for you in Jesus' precious name. Please just walk with our kingdom friends. They'll pass some information across to you. God bless you. God bless you. Shall we all lift up our hands to heaven? Now, it is a new month. This is the sixth month of the year. May this month be to you and I a month of divine visitation. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said, did unto Sarah as he has spoken. May this mist of the year be to you a season of his visitation. God Almighty visits you with his power. God Almighty visit you with his power. May everything that had hitherto been a challenge since the year began, or been a challenge for years gone by, may this month be to you the month of the manifestation of his power for your deliverance. Manifestation of his power for your liberty manifestation of his power for your own turnaround testimony. May this month be to you a month of visitation with his favor. The same God that visited Mary with his favor and by his favor he made the impossible become possible. By his favor he turned her into an eternal excellency. He said remember oh God thy people remember and visit us with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. In the name of Jesus, may this month be your own month of visitation. Visitation with his favor. Favor silences oppositions. Favor beats competition. David was not a candidate for the throne, but the favor of God 
beat down the competitors. Esther was not the only virgin, perhaps not the most beautiful, but the favor of God singled her out against the competition. I'm praying from the depth of my heart for faculty, staff, students, that in this month of June, no matter how many people want the same thing that you desire, the favor of God will single you out. 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 This month of June, be highly favored in the name of Jesus. Be highly favored in the name of Jesus. As the Lord lives, this month you will not be sick. Your children will not be sick. Your spouse will not be sick. Family members will not be sick. You won't need to run elder scatter over your health. You won't run elder scatter over the health of your spouse and your children. For us as students, for your sake, your parents be kept by the power of God. Your parents will not be sick. Your guidance and sponsors will not be afflicted. Their businesses will not go down. Their finances will not crash. No evil report from home. Nothing from home that will break your joy. By all means, it shall be a month of glad tidings. A month of great salutations. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. For us as a university, it shall be a peaceful month. It shall be a month of progress. A month of advancement. God will reign supreme in our midst. And where God is, there is liberty, there is prosperity, there is advancement. That shall be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ.